developmental psychologists have done a beautiful job at studying how the ability to think about other individuals thinking, how that develops. And it ends up you're not born with this ability. Um, and by the time, and anybody who has had a four, a three-year-old and then a four-year-old will be uh, very aware that by the time your kid is four, they're very skilled at deceiving you, um, and very actively. And a three-year-old can do it too, um, but probably not quite as skillfully. And the reason is because there's a major shift in how people think about the thoughts of others, okay? So because we're interested in what makes us unique and how um, our unique skills um, develop, people wanted to know, um, is it that animals, not only do they think, because actually most scientists would easily agree, absolutely animals think, they make decisions in their life uh, all the time. But the, but the even more complex and interesting question is, do they know that others are thinking? Can they actually assess what somebody else knows and doesn't know? Um, so one of the ways that we do this uh, as humans, and one of the ways that small children just start to think about the thoughts of others, is that they, they, they start to pay attention to social cues. OK? So I look up, and you see me look up. And you instantly say, the guy's nuts, or he saw something. But the point is, you all were thinking about what I was thinking about, OK? And the first way we do this is we start paying attention to social cues like this. So people got fascinated by the question, is this capability also in animals, OK? Um, so as a student with um, my advisor as an undergraduate, I went out and started playing games with um, chimpanzees. Uh, and it was a very simple game, and the same game that we play uh, with young children to assess their ability to think about the thoughts of others. And it ends up that chimpanzees weren't very good at the game. So if you hide food in one of two places, uh, and the chimpanzee knows that food is hidden, in the case of young children, it'll be a small toy, um, and you try to just tell the chimpanzee where the, where the food is, um, by either pointing or looking or standing close to where the food is, well, they can't figure it out. Um, they have no clue where the thing is that's been hidden. Um, and so, um, so young children are very good at this. Um, and it's one of the first things that comes online uh, when you're between 18 and 24 months old. So that seemed to be beautiful evidence that this is something crucially important, not only to be human, but to develop human language and human culture. Um, and so this was a big idea that people were very excited about. Um, I went to my advisor at Emory when I was an undergraduate, and I said, you know what? I just did all these tests with the chimps. They're really abysmal. Even though chimpanzees, as Klaus has beautifully demonstrated, they do communicate, they do gesture, they do have vocal communication, but they're not able to solve this very simple problem. Um, but I, you know, I think my dog does that. Um, and he said, ah, everybody's dog does calculus, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, you know, go away. But being a fantastic advisor, his name is Mike Tomasello, being a fantastic advisor, he said, all right, fine, you won't leave me alone. Why don't you do an experiment? So the experiment I'm going to do today with our volunteers is the experiment that um, we did with young children, that we did with chimpanzees, and that we did with dogs. And the punchline is, it ends up dogs are incredibly good at this, uh, at using social cues that young children use as they begin to develop language and participate in human culture, and chimpanzees really struggle with. Now, the Duke Canine Cognition Center and all the places where people have studied dog cognition, they don't have hundreds of people watching, OK? <laughs> so I've actually never done this before. So um, it may be that the dogs struggle a little bit. But it doesn't matter, because they're wonderful, because they're dogs. And I'm sure all of you are dog lovers. And what we're going to do is we're going to try Sammy first. If Sammy can come out, it'd be great. And we're just going to have two hiding locations here on stage. Let's give Sammy a hand, round of applause. Yay, Sammy. All right, so if Sammy can just sit between where we got him. All right, now I'm going to show him some food. Now, Sammy is adorable. Get this. I've already, I, we, we did, I did show him that I was going to hide food here a little bit before the show, and he is wonderful. Check this out. OK, stay there, Sammy. OK, stay there. How cute is that? All right, now stay there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the food one or two places, but I'm not going to show him where. OK, so even you won't know where I've hidden it. OK? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, Sammy, go there. All right. Yay! Better than a chimpanzee. Fantastic. 